Professor, I'm so sorry. We, we were, you know, it, was, it was a bit spotty, that line. So this thing about the hippocampus being bigger if you learn street names seems almost incredible. Yes, that's right. It's one of these remarkable findings. It's in a lot of textbooks. And like you said, it's, been, it's something we've known for 20 years. So we thought in 2021 we'd go back and have a look. But the big key difference this time is we're, we're, we're involving these London licensed taxi drivers and scanning their brains again and trying to, to understand more. We've got more detailed uh, insights this time because the technology's got better. But we're also uh, um, engaging the taxi drivers in a test we've been designing to hopefully, hopefully spot uh, early signs of dementia. And we think that's particularly interesting because um, the taxi drivers have this enhanced bit of the brain that seems to decline in dementia. So we're hoping they can tell us more about the sort of expert, uh, you know, remarkable brains and what that might tell us about um, our test for dementia. Isn't the shortcut here to just find out whether there is less dementia in black cab drivers than there is in the average person in the population? Yeah, that's a great question. It's something we're looking to explore with this research. That is an obvious uh, direction that will require a lot of taxi drivers. So the fact that you're helping to promote this on the show and and let uh, London cabbies know that they should contact Taxi Brains to help, that's extremely helpful for us. Oh, by all means, it's called Taxi Brains. And and yeah, I guess it will involve driving around with wires sticking out of your skull, will it? (laughs) No, not at all. Uh, Not at all. So... In our experiments, the, the, the MRI scanners weigh a huge amount. They, they can't be moved, so the, the, they, uh, the taxi drivers need to come into our, our um, UCL site at, on Bedford Way in London. They'd have a scan there. It wouldn't take very long, um, and we can measure their brain. Whilst they solve the, the quiz they get to do in the test and the knowledge of working out how you go from one place to another uh, and solve it in their head, and it's a like a, a puzzle test they have to do. This is is close to the thing we're always told of doing Sudoku to try to stave off dementia. And, yeah, that all sounds great until someone shows you a photo of a brain of a dementia patient, somebody who's died of dementia, and the brain has physically changed into spongy form, and you think no amount of Sudoku is going to stop that. Well, like you said, Alzheimer's is a disease, and it's one we can eventually halt. So charities like Alzheimer's Research UK have done an amazing amount of work and they've supported this particular project as well, where we think one day there will be a cure, it will be another disease we'll be able to stop and, and you'll halt that. But what we're trying to do here is really try and enhance and understand those early tests that spot people before there's even any sign on a scan, for example. Um, that's really one of the, the great challenges at the moment is trying to find ways to, to identify uh, people before so can be treated in the future. I'll, I'll, let me bring our taxi driver in in just a sec. But just sorry, it's so interesting, Professor. Forgive me if I ask you a couple more. The one thing I've, this is entirely anecdotal, but one thing I've noticed and also heard is that people who have very, very rigorous, precise occupations, maybe engineers, the kind of slide rule mind, seem to be more prone to dementia, paradoxically, right? Thatcher would be an example. She worked her socks off and but seemed to burn out. And then you think, actually... Is it maybe that they're the ones who notice because they're using so much more of their brain that when their faculties go, they notice? It could be. That could be a good explanation. I'm not an expert in that in that direction, but I think that makes that is certainly one of the reasons that might be the case. Yeah. In, but, but in which case, then getting your brain really tuned up won't help you. It just means you notice the symptoms earlier. Yeah, it's one. Of the, so Alzheimer's dementia is it, disease. Sorry, is one of those uh, problems where it's not. You can put in all sorts of things to try and halt it, but it's some, in some cases, it is, you know, it's out of your hands. So you can try and have a healthy lifestyle, do all these things right, but it's just something we, you know, you can't completely uh, combat through that that uh, alone. So we do need to do all we can to try and stave off and fight dementia. But ultimately, it's, it's a disease we need to have treatments for that people are working very hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. And and just the last one for you then, Hugo, if I may, which is that there's a different track on all this. I know there's so much research going on, which is that dementia is caused by something called protein tangles in the brain. And one of the papers, and it's a classic tabloid front page where you don't really believe it, but they had a, a headline a week ago saying they've got a tangle busting pill now and it'll sort it all out. That's a completely different approach, isn't it? Well, that's exactly is one of the one of the lines people are taking is to try and find pills, effectively medication that would would halt and uh, stave off the disease. Uh, and it really is an ongoing line of research. It doesn't it doesn't appear, as far as I'm aware, to be there's some magical cure at the moment. But they are constantly assessing and checking what's possible. Sean Paul Day, London taxi driver. There we go. I hope that's given you a bit of background on what you're you're going into here.
what I'm heading into. Yeah, I, I take a issue with you that the knowledge is outdated, but that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> mm. oh, well, and it, listen, in, in terms of this test, it's certainly not outdated because using your brain to learn 100,000 landmarks is a brilliant, brilliant thing. And, and, and I guess apart from anything else, you know more about London than anyone else. Well, I can only describe the knowledge as a phenomenal feat of Pelmanism, like you say, I think they have to commit to memory about 20,000 streets. On those streets are about 50,000 landmarks. But crucially, you have to be able to navigate the most efficient route between any two of those 50,000 landmarks. And only when you are fully conversant in being able to do that, uh, and without using a sat-nav, of course, that TFL will deem you competent enough to be able to drive a cab. Yeah. So, yes, it's a, it's a very uh, difficult process, which takes about two to four years to complete, depending on your level of commitment. And how long have you been a taxi driver, Sean? Sometimes I feel like I've been a taxi driver about 100 years. But uh, <laughs> it, in reality, uh, about 20. But I think a good thing about um, the knowledge is the um, uh, London is an incredible city with its prolificacy and its, and its rich history. And I think... The process of actually studying the knowledge and its accumulative nature of what you're learning is as valuable as the day you get your license. Well, that was my point about defending it, even if a sat-nav works quite well. You know, to know it is amazing. Here's a test for you, Sean, uh, because a cab driver the other day was telling me about something called Hot and Cold Corner. Do you know what that is? Hot and Cold Corner. Well, the problem with me, I'm one of those rare cabbies that has forgotten more than they've ever learned. (laughs) <laughs> I'm try- it's near the Albert Hall, but I can't, I'm trying to remember why. Oh, it's an ex- two explorers. Maybe it's Livingston on one side of the building and Shackleton on the other or something. So one oh, explored right, yeah, Africa that's... and the other explored the Arctic. And I love that cab drivers call it hot and cold corner. Um, yeah, that rings a bell. They, I mean, cabby parlance is uh, yeah, it's pervasive in our industry. I think also that the cab trade uh, as a collective has a, a long history of getting involved with good causes and charities. And, and this is no exception. So if we can do what we can to assist uh, Professor Hugo and his team in finding a solution to what is a devastating disease, then that can only be considered a good thing. Well, that's great. Hugo, if, if Sean Paul Day has all this information in his brain, is he better protected against dementia? That's one of the questions. That's the whole line, the reason for doing research is to understand these things. It is possible, but we don't know yet. So that's, that's why we're both on your show. We're excited to tell people this is ongoing active research and it needs as many London cabbies to sign up to Taxi Brains to help make that possible. Thank you very much, Dean. Happy driving, Sean. Nice to talk to you. And that's Professor Thank Hugo Spears. Thank you, leader of Thank the much, Taxi man. Brains Project. Isn't that interesting? Physically changing the brain when you learn stuff. Hot and cold corner, help me out there. Oh!